My calcium reactor media has finally run out, so it's time to change it. And I figured it's a perfect opportunity to tell you more about calcium reactors, if you need to run one or if you don't, and a little bit more about how they work. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Cody Grates with Real Reefing TV and I'm here to help you save time, money, and frustration in the real reefing hobby by sharing my experiences and knowledge. And today, we're gonna be changing out the media in this calcium reactor, getting it replenished, cleaned out, and getting it running again. So I wanna tell you a little bit more about calcium reactors and how they work. So a calcium reactor is basically just a chamber which you pump water into at a consistent rate or pull water out of at a consistent rate that is full of basically dead coral skeletons. So think about the corals out in the ocean and how they went about actually calcifying and making up their coral skeleton. Well, they took all the nutrients and the elements that they needed to make up their chemical structure, their calcium bodies, right? So they took in calcium, alkalinity, slight bit of magnesium. They also took in trace elements like strontium and, uh, and iodine and, and all these other trace elements to make up their coral skeleton. And so basically what we're doing is we're taking those dead coral skeletons, we're putting them into a chamber of water that is fed from our tank and we're putting uh, carbon dioxide into that uh, chamber to lower the pH to a point at which it dissolves the structure of that dead coral skeleton. So whereas when in our tanks where we need a high pH of over seven, we are basically taking that down below seven and that's what starts to break down and dissolve those uh, coral skeletons into something that's soluble. It'll drip back into your tank and your corals can use it to then build their calcium structure, build their bodies exactly how they would have in the ocean. And so calcium reactors are a great way to maintain stability because they are done at a consistent rate. It's also great for just, you know, not having to dose manually every single day. You set it up, you tune it in, and it's good to go. It's been a year since I filled it up. So it's time to fill it back up again and get this thing on the road, on the tank, in the, whatever, it's, it's fine. You guys get the picture. So I'm gonna get it out, show you a little bit more about how it, how it works, the actual mechanics of it, and then we'll get it cleaned out, and then we'll go ahead and get it replenished. We'll get it put back in, filled back up, back online, tune it back in, and rock and roll. Let's do it. So the first thing that I've done is I've turned off this peristaltic pump. Basically, this is what pumps water in and out of the calcium reactor. So I've turned it off so that I can go ahead and disconnect the lines from the calcium reactor and get it out. I'm also gonna turn off the CO2 regulator so it doesn't continue to feed CO2 into the tank. I'm gonna do that via my Apex. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my Apex Fusion app and I'm gonna go down to CO2 regulator. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the recirculation pump. I don't want the recirculation pump mixing air and all that sort of good stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. I believe that's this one. Oh, and I'm gonna turn off the CO2 tank. I guess I'd forgotten how many things are hooked up to this calcium reactor because I do have a pH probe that's also attached to it. So there's a line in, a line out, your CO2 line in, as well as pH probe. And then there's also the cord. So you have the cord for the pump that recirculates the water within the calcium reactor and a cord for the pump 
that moves the water in and out of the calcium reactor. There's a lot attached to this thing, um, and it takes up a bit of real estate in the stand here. What I'm gonna do about the pH probe is I'm actually gonna unhook the lead to the apex and then pull the wire out around because I remember when I set up the calcium reactor, it was quite difficult to make sure that I got a good seal. All right, so there's a good look at it. So before we get it out, I just wanna show you kind of where it sits right now and, and how much media I have left. So when I started about a year ago, the media was up to here. So let's go ahead and get this out so we can get it cleaned up and refilled. We'll give you a, a look at what's inside. So you can kind of see for reference how tall this is. I would say it's roughly 30 inches tall and, uh, and it's got about, about a full five inch five inch diameter, so I don't know. You can look up the specs online. I'll throw the link in the description below so you can figure all that out. Um, but it runs an Eheim pump that recirculates water from this tube. And what that tube does, pushes water down to the bottom. There's a, there's a, a plate down there, kind of a bubbler plate. The water comes all the way up and into a pipe here which then goes into the inlet of the pump. That also will draw CO2 from the CO2 regulator. Um, the regulator will push the CO2 into this bubble counter. Bubble counter, I don't need it because my regulator counts bubbles for me. It's a electronic regulator and it opens and shuts the solenoid valve um, exactly at the right second for the right amount of time as you tune it. Um, you can make the bubbles larger, smaller, and then you can tune it to say how many bubbles per minute, or sorry, how many bubbles per second you want it to pump in. And so it will then be put in here. It will be shredded up into micro bubbles, just like kind of a, how a skimmer works, and then pumped down back to the bottom. And that's how the calcium reactor is able to lower the pH of the water inside to slowly melt the media or the coral skeletons inside of the chamber then takes that water called effluent and drips it back into your tank so let's go ahead and get these screws off of here we'll get it drained i've got a bucket standing nearby and a couple of towels those are the kind of the things that you'll need when you're maintenancing a calcium reactor just like this one This calcium reactor had a lot of, lot of, it's like chocolate milk. Okay, so one thing that we wanna do is clean off this O-ring right here and make sure that there's no sand particles on the O-ring that could create a gap between it and water can leak out. One thing that we also wanna do is make sure that this is positioned, this uh, tube right here is positioned properly. So now that we've done that, we can also You can also take the tube off of uh, off of the uh, manifold here, the top. Take this off. This connects to the down the downspout, the down tube in here, and we'll go ahead and put that on there first. That way, when we connect it down on, it's easier to kind of align, and then just little tiny shifts are manageable. So we're gonna line it back up on there. The screw holes should fit back down on. Bolts put back on here and get it back in its spot.
let's talk about who needs a calcium reactor. Well, not everyone needs a calcium reactor. In fact, you probably don't. Are mainly suited for those that really can't keep up with the requirements of their tank or the demand of their tank um, on calcium and alkalinity. They can't keep up with those with basic water changes on a monthly basis or weekly basis. Also, they're really for those that um, can't keep up with their demand with dosing or using a dose pump. I was using a dosing pump to dose calcium and alkalinity and magnesium to my tank for me, but I was using about a gallon every three weeks or so. And so it was just becoming too much. And quite honestly, I would forget to fill the thing up. Um, I'd have to mix the two part solution. It was a whole thing. I'd rather just be able to set it up and forget it. These setups are not cheap. So I would recommend if you can maintain your tank by dosing calcium and alkalinity, get a doser and, uh, and do it that way. It's much less expensive. And if you can meet the demand of your tank doing that, it is very stable and, uh, and it can be very easy to use. So I would recommend starting there. And if you can't meet the demand, then step up to one of these. Now, don't get me wrong, these things are awesome and they're great for automation and they're great for stability. I don't really have to worry about messing around with this thing at all once it's set up and running. Now it does take some keeping an eye on and that's why my tank controller does that for me um, and making sure that there's some redundancy. But once you get everything moving at a steady pace through the calcium reactor, be it the water or the effluent going through it and the carbon dioxide going into it, you can create a stable pH and a stable drip rate, which will allow you to keep a stable calcium and alkalinity measures in your reef tank. All right, it's time for me to get this thing back in the tank and let you guys get back to enjoying your reef tanks. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button right here. And you can check out my last video right over here. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.